And we are welcoming uh, everyone to the live streaming of morning prayer at Good Shepherd Episcopal Church in Tequesta, Florida on this on this Monday. And this Monday is uh, January 24th. And it is a little chilly or cold, actually, down here. I think it's 48 degrees. It's pretty, pretty cold for us. <laughs> anyway, my name is Joan Enskow. I'm a member of the Good Shepherd daily office team, the ministry that brings you morning and evening prayer. This service is streamed live weekdays morning at 9 a.m. exclusively on Zoom. And uh, if you are participating in this, in this, not in the live, but later on, if you'd like to join us at 9 a.m., uh, just go to the um, Good Shepherd uh, um, on uh, what is it goodshoponline.org <laughs> select the worship down download list and click on prayer scroll down you'll find the surface leaflet for today's service just look for today's date and immediately above the surface leaflets there's an image of prayer books in the pews click on the link and join via zoom and there you are with us live okay but this service is also available later uh, beginning at 10 a.m. on all Good Shepherd Communications, Facebook, YouTube, and of course, the prayer page of Good Shepherd. And uh, <clears throat> you can chat with me later or anytime if you need to chat in the upper corner of your, your, uh, your computer or iPad. And uh, today, uh, <clears throat> today we are going to commemorate Florence Lee Tim Oi. And Florence um, Lee Tim, uh, I just looked her up and she died in 1944, which is why we suffer, celebrate her uh, day, which is today on uh, January 24th. And um, she died in Ontario, Canada in uh, Toronto at the age of 84. She had a wonderful history though. She uh, was in China, you could tell from the name that she probably was Chinese. And she lived. Um, <clears throat> she lived in um, uh, in China, and was not ordained until 1944 in the Episcopal Anglican Communion on January 25th. Okay. And uh, anyway, she lived in Hong Kong. She was born uh, May 5th, in 1907. I have a picture of her. I don't know if you can see this, but there she is. Very devout lady who was impressed with a friend of hers that was ordained as a deacon. And, uh, and then she saw, she felt called to do that herself. And, um, but being the first woman to be ordained to the priesthood was something for her and a marvelous woman she had quite a life i mean she uh, <laughs> she was in china when uh, japan was in charge of them and had uh and uh, she helped refugees from hong kong where's where she was born and lived in kowloon uh, helping refugees to the, who fled the mainland of china in the midst of the second sino-japanese war Look at that, all those wars, all those years. <laughs> and uh, anyway, she, she was uh, called to be this woman in, as, in, a, in a priest. And uh, her biography is very sad. Um, let's see, she was uh, the communist government in China closed all churches from 1958 to 1974 during which time Lee was compelled to work on a farm and then in a factory. She was forced to undergo political re-education because she was designated as a counter-revolutionary. Lee Timoy went to the mountains to pray during that era because she was scared to be seen with her fellow Christian friends. She said that she nearly committed suicide during these long years of persecution. The Red Guards even forced her this is so sad, to cut up her own church vestments with scissors. But she pursued, wonderful woman. And she ended up in Ontario, Canada. <laughs> I didn't get to read how, how that happened, but that's where she was in Toronto. 
And uh, so we will commemorate her later with her prayers. Anyway, welcome. And we have more here. Debbie's here. Welcome, Debbie and Pete and Wendy and Kathy. And well, I mentioned Pam, Ian and Gary. And I'm so glad you're here with me. We will proceed now with the uh, with the uh, with the uh, right to of morning prayer. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. <coughs> <coughs> Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Hallelujah. The earth is the Lord's, for he made it. Come, let us adore him. We will now say in unison the Venite. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before our Lord, our maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today, you would hearken to his voice. The earth is the Lord's, for he made it. Come, let us adore him. We will say in unison Psalms 41 and 52 and pause between the two of them. Happy are they who consider the poor and needy. The Lord will deliver them in the time of trouble. The Lord perseveres them and keeps them alive so that they may be happy in the land. He does not hand them over to the will of their enemies. The Lord sustains them on their sickbed and ministers to them in their illness. I said, Lord, be merciful to me. Heal me, for I have sinned against you. My enemies are saying wicked things about me. When will he die and his name perish? Even if they come to see me, they speak empty words. Their heart collects false rumors. They go outside and spread them. All my enemies whisper together about me and devise evil against me. A deadly thing, they say, has fastened on him. He has taken to his bed and will never get up again. Even my best friend whom I trusted who broke bread with me, has lifted up his heel and turned against me. But you, O Lord, be merciful to me and raise me up, and I shall repay them. By this I know you are pleased with me, that my enemy does not triumph over me. In my integrity you hold me fast, that my enemy does not triumph over me. By, the, by this I know you are pleased with me, in my integrity, you hold me fast and shall set me before your face forever. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel from age to age. Amen. Amen.
Psalm 52. You tyrant, why do you boast of wickedness against the godly all day long? You plot ruin. Your tongue is like a sharpened razor, a worker of deception. You love evil more than good and lying more than speaking the truth. You love all words that hurt, O oh, you deceitful tongue. Oh, that God would demolish you utterly, topple you and snatch you from your dwelling and root you out of the land of the living. The righteous shall see and tremble and they shall laugh at him saying, this is the one who did not take God for a refuge, but trusted in great wealth and relied upon wickedness. But I am like a green olive tree in the house of God. I trust in the mercy of God forever and ever. I will give you thanks for what you have done and declare the goodness of your name in the presence of the godly. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our first lesson is from Genesis 14. And if you will just give me the liberty of pronouncing all these names that I have no clue, <laughs> but I'm trying. Just listen to the overall of the story of Genesis. In the days of King Amaphel of Shinar, King Eric of Elisar, King Shedor Lamor of Elam, and King Tidal of Gom, these kings made war with King Bera of Sodom, King Bersha of Gomorrah, King Shinab of Adma, King Shem Shemeber of Zeboam, and the king of Bela, that is Zor. All these joined forces in the valley of Siddam, that is, the Dead Sea. For 12 years they served Shedda Olomar, but in the 13th year they rebelled. In the 14th year, Shedda Olomar and the kings who were with him came and subdued the Rephim in Asheroth. Ka'em, the Zuman in, in Ham, the Emim in Sheva Kirathamim, and the Horites in the hill country of Seir, as far as Elephant on the edge of the wilderness. Then they turned back and came to An Mishpah, that is Kadesh, and subdued all the country of the Amalekites, and also the Amorites who lived in Herazan Tamar. Then the king of Sodom, the king of Gomorrah, the king of Adma, the king of Zeboam, and the king of Bela, that is Zor, went out and they joined battle in the valley of Siddam. And King Shedor Lormar of Ilam, King Tidal of Goam, King Amaphrel of Shinar, and King Arak of Elisar. Four kings against five. I guess that's all we need to remember there. <laughs> now the valley of Siddam was full of bitumen, bitumen pits. And as the kings of Sodom and Gomorrah fled, some fell into them. And the rest fled to the hill country. So the enemy took all the goods of Sodom and Gomorrah and all their provisions and went their way. They also took Lot, the son of Abram's brother who lived in Sodom and his goods and departed. Then when one who had escaped came and told Abram the Hebrew, who was living by the oaks of Mamre, the Amorite, brother of Eshcol and of Anar, these were allies of Abram. When Abram heard that his nephew had been taken captive, he led forth his trained men born in his house, 318 of them, big house, <laughs> and went in pursuit as far as Dan. He divided his force against them by night and his servants and routed them and pursued them to Hobah, north of Damascus. Then he brought back all the goods and also brought back his nephew Lot with his goods and the women and the people. After his return from the defeat of Shedda or Lormor and the kings who were with him, the king of Sodom went out to meet him in the valley of Sheba, 
that is the King's Valley, and King Mekizeldek of Selim brought out bread and wine. He was priest of God Most High. He blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram by God Most High, maker of heaven and earth, and blessed be God Most High, who has delivered your enemies into your hand. And Abram gave him one-tenth of everything. Then the king of Sodom said to Abram, Give me the people, but take the goods for yourself. But Abram said to the king of Sodom, I have sworn to the Lord, God most high, maker of heaven and earth, that I would not take a thread or a sandal thong or anything that is yours, so that you might not say, I have made Abram rich. I will take nothing but what the young men have eaten and the share of the men who went with me. Honor, Eshkol, and Monterey. Let them take their share. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs> now we'll say in unison the first song of Isaiah. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my savior. Therefore, you shall draw water with rejoicing from the springs of salvation. And on that day, you shall say, give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples. See that they remember that his name is exalted. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things, and this is known in all the world. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion, ring out your joy, for the great one in the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our second lesson is from John fourth chapter much easier to read <laughs> when the two days were over he went from that place to galilee for jesus himself had test testified that a prophet has no honor in the prophet's own country when he came to galilee the galileans welcomed him since they had seen all that he had done in jerusalem at the festival for they too had gone to the festival then he came again to Cana in Galilee, where he had changed the water into wine. Now there was a royal official whose son lay ill in Capernaum. When he heard that Jesus had come from Judea to Galilee, he went and begged him to come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. Then Jesus said to him, unless you see the wonders, you will not believe. The official said to him, sir, come down before my little boy dies. Jesus said to him, go, your son will live. The man believed the word that Jesus spoke to him and started on his way. As he was going down, his slaves met him and told him that his child was alive. So he asked them the hour when he began to recover. And they said to him yesterday at one in the afternoon, the fever left him. The father realized that this was the hour when Jesus had said to him, your son will live. So he himself believed, along with his whole household. Now this was the second sign that Jesus did after coming from Judea to Galilee. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll say in unison the song of the redeemed. O ruler of the universe, Lord God, great deeds are they that you have done, surpassing human understanding. Your ways are ways of righteousness and truth. O king of all the ages, who can fail to do you homage, Lord, and sing the praises of your name? For you only are the Holy One. All nations will draw near and fall down before you because your just and holy works have been revealed. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now 
and will be forever. Amen. Together we say the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Suffrages A. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. The Collect of the Day, which is the third Sunday after the Epiphany. Give us grace, O Lord, to answer reverently the call of our Savior, Jesus Christ, and proclaim to all the people the good news of his salvation, that we and the whole world may perceive the glory of his marvelous works, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. This is the call to commemorate Florence Lee Tin Oi, first woman priest in the Anglican Communion, who died in 1944. Almighty God, who pours out your spirit upon your sons and daughters, grant that we, following the example of your servant Florence Lee Timoy, chosen priest in your church. May with faithfulness, patience, and tenacity proclaim your holy gospel to all the nations through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. A colic for peace. O oh God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we surely, trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A prayer of self-dedication. Almighty and eternal God, so draw our hearts to you, so guide our minds, so fill our imaginations, so control our wills, that we may be wholly yours, utterly dedicated to you, and then use us, we pray, as you will, and always to your glory and the welfare of your people, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ 
and particularly those throughout the Anglican communion. Remembering today, especially the Diocese of Kafatan, Nigeria, the Right Reverend Dr. Marcus Matagu Dogo Bishop. We pray also for our Diocese of Southeast Florida and our Bishop, the Right Reverend Peter Eaton, and our companion dioceses, remembering today especially the Diocese of the Bahamas and the Turks and Caicos Islands, the Right Reverend Losh Zane Boyd, Senior Bishop. A prayer for mission. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry, they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We pray for our own parish family and those dear to them. Remembering today especially, Ricardo, Nadia, and family, Joanna, Karen, Daryl, Kay, David, and Jane, Liz, Todd, Waddler, Wally and Eveline, James, Nicholas, Saxon, Joe, Lance, Pete and Julie and family, Kelly, Brad and Linda, Abigail, Barbara, Melanie, Lenny, Linton and Gloria, Nico, Martin, Shirley, Mark, Robert, Ray, Sam, and Cindy. We pray also today for our worship ministries, remembering especially music, that the words and harmonies sung in corporate worship may bring those who attend closer to the word of God and live streaming and recording that our worship services may be available to everyone everywhere. And it is wonderful. It is wonderful. A prayer for the parish. Almighty and ever living God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, hear our prayers for this parish family. Strengthen the faithful, arouse the careless, and restore the penitent. Grant us all things necessary for our common life and bring us all to be of one heart and mind within your holy church through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. At this time, we invite your prayers, a petition, intercession, and thanksgiving, either shared with all or held in the silence of your hearts. Just use the chat area and I will read them. <laughs> okay. For me and Ian would the say, pray for our, our forthcoming annual meeting, that's next Sunday, that the members of Good Shepherd may review the safe, the state of the parish, and elect new leaders to enable us to act upon what God would have us do. And remember that our service is at nine o'clock. It's the only service next Sunday. And then stay for 10 o'clock where we have our meeting. And Ian is going is asking to be on the on the vestry this year. And Ian got my vote. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and Pam says Thanksgiving for my daughter's wedding on January 15th. And Pam said it was wonderful. And she they got to attend. And I'm so thankful for that. New life together. Yes. And Debbie, Thanksgiving for a friend's successful surgery and another friend who begins a new job. Yes, we pray for those starting in new adventures 
And we pray that they remember that God is with them. And Gary, for Aaron, Gabrielle, Ashley, COVID, Ashley who has COVID, and Nancy who's having surgery. Joy of life for life, even coyotes. It must have been a football game. <laughs> okay. And Ian says, Thanksgiving for the birthday of my nephew, Brett, who is 31 today. That's just a baby, isn't it, Ian? <laughs> 31. Well, we bless him on his birthday. I do have some prayers back there, buddy. Birthday one. No, I don't. Or for those, let's see. Uh, oh, uh, Wendy says, we have coyotes, too. Thank you, Joan, she says. Wendy, I'm not sure about, oh, where you are, you have coyotes. Oh, okay, <laughs> real coyotes, okay. <laughs> All righty. And uh, for strength and confidence, let's say that for everyone that not only going through surgery and suffering from COVID, but also new jobs and, uh, and uh, successful surgeries for strength and confidence. Heavenly Father, I want to close this. Heavenly Father, giver of life and health, comfort and relieve your sick servants and give your power of healing to those who minister to his needs, that he or she may be strengthened in, his, in their weakness and have confidence in your loving care through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And for all of us, for, for, for protection, assist us mercifully, O Lord, in though these are supplications and prayers, and dispose the way of your servants toward the attainment of everlasting salvation, that among all the changes and chances of this mortal life, they may ever be defended by your gracious and ready help through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. See if I can find my way back here. <laughs> now we have a prayer for our parish. Almighty and ever living God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, hear our prayers for this parish family. Strengthen the faithful, arouse the careless, and restore the penitent. Grant us all things necessary for our common life and bring us all to be of one heart and mind within your holy church through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I thank you all for being with me. Gary, it's nice to see your face. Everyone else is blank out there. <laughs> and Ian, thank you again for all you do. And good luck next Sunday. And and prayers for your trip for your trip. I understand you're traveling to see a sick friend of yours. You have safe travels too. And Pam, uh, it's so wonderful that you had a good wedding. And and uh, you're my my sweet neighbor, my angel. <laughs> it's so good to see you. And Kathy, are you away? I'm not sure. What if you have coyotes? <laughs> or is that one day? Yeah, Debbie, Debbie says uh, to everyone, amen, and she thanks me. Well, Debbie, it's just wonderful to be here. And I um, missed you last night at the game. You missed a good, a good pulled pork dinner. <laughs> oh, Wendy says she's here in Jupiter. Okay. So, Pete, thank you for being here with me, too. And now we'll have the prayer of St. Christosom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this word knowledge of your truth in the age to come life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
and glory to God whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Now you go in peace and remember to be kind to everyone. Thank you. Amen.